We just had a knockdown drag out argument early in the show about running backs and running back value. And so it's a real honor to bring on the person <laughs> who killed the running back. Mina Kimes. <laughs> Mina, yeah. Mina, you clearly are as responsible as anybody for the way that this conversation in actual front offices has evolved, aren't you? Uh, I think if we're playing Clue, I'm the accessory to the murder. I feel like there are a lot of uh, a lot of running back value killers who cleared the way for me to make that argument. Um, it's funny because I uh, I've spoken about this a bit on my show. Mini Cop Show featuring Lenny and uh, other other platforms, and I, I'm getting both the you're responsible, you nerds, you did this. Uh, all these GMs are listening to you. You have so much power, and then I'm also getting accusations that I'm a, a bleeding heart lib for arguing that it's a bad thing. So it's just kind of funny to That's occupy right. both positions at the same time, which I think is actually. Where everybody should be is, well, not should be, but I guess what I believe is you can't make a logical football case that teams are wrong to do this, but you can also make a really strong economic case that it's there's some moral issues with it because of the way football players get paid. So the moral stuff, I mean, I want to dive into this. It's been a while since Mina has joined the show, though, right? Stu God, since the last time you saw Mina. Uh, I saw Mina at the Super Bowl, but I think she's been on the show since, or has been on one of my shows since. Maybe. I did see you at the Super Bowl, briefly. You were taking a cigarette break. I was, yeah. yeah that's, was. that's what I tend to do when I'm not speaking. I smoke. Yeah. <laughs> so you got knocked up, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, I, I was at the Super Bowl, I think. Let me oh, really? My... Ooh. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> What are we thinking, Stu? Like, what do we think of her name, huh, Greg? Pablo. Uh, Stu, I mean. No. Greg Combs has if a I, right to it. If I had to choose one of your names, yeah, Stu's not bad. Thank Honestly, you. Honestly, <laughs> Thank you. That's what I was thinking. I don't know how you tell tell a baby, though, like how you break the news that the namesake is. At some point, he's going to find out <laughs> and do his own him. research. <laughs> it's tough to tell your son that he was named after a cigarette addiction. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I think Stewart is kind of back, though. I Because I, we looked at like those books that show you the most Oh, yeah. What are the trends? I, I did this, too, three years ago. When Violet yeah. was born, what what math, what analysis, what analytics have you applied to your search? Well, well I think kind of, and you, a lot. There's a lot of baby possessors in the container, <laughs> baby dads. I don't know. A lot possessors. of fathers, fathers of daughters, possessors. Fathers You're going to be such a children. great mom. We have yeah. a child. Yeah. So I, I think baby you guys possessor. are have all looked at these too, probably, and you or you're around small children, and you can attest to this. It seems like the trend now is to go to like kind of old timey names, but not too weird. Yeah, like like Greg. I don't know about Greg. Gregory, uh, <laughs> Gregory would be old. <laughs> I was thinking more like Stewart or yes. um, you know Bartholomew, uh, Holden, uh, Arthur. Ooh, Felix Arthur's is old really as popular. hell. Jedidiah. Felix is like bumping these days. Um, Emma is a big one for women still. Ooh, Emma, yeah. Gertrude. Adelaide, stuff like that. Not like Jess. Like when we were kids, every kid was Jess and Mike. That is, you are persona non grata on the playground if you're Jess or Mike. Now. Yep. You're being called by your last name if you're a Jess or a yeah. Mike. Yeah. Which for Mike is a first name. So can we give. Anyways, yes. Can for we... me, it's a wiener. I mean, imagine that. Imagine that last name. Oh. It's a tough lot to draw as a kid. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Can we give Mina some unsolicited advice? We are, as Chris said, a room full of people who have a child. And so let's go around the room. Can we get some a little bit of sound, some triumphant advice, proclamation, <laughs> horns? Can we offer some stuff? Do you mean the fanfare that we always offer? <laughs> yeah, we got that. <laughs> Great. My piece of advice, if I can start, Mina... I'd like to I'm fully so empower glad because you. I definitely asked for it. Yep, and yep, yep, yep. Here's what I've learned as the father of a daughter. Allow us some mansplaining. Here's the parent. thing about having <laughs> so a child. I can't wait. Here's the thing about having a child. Uh, okay. It's totally cool to be a basic bitch. Let Go me explain. On. You're gonna be a cliche. 
You're going to post photos. You're going to be handed eventually a little drawing made by a child that you would have laughed at, dismissed a year ago, two years ago. But now, in your basic but very real neurological activation, you're going to tear up, and you're going to want to take a photo of that. You're going to show your friends that little drawing, that photograph. It's okay to be a basic bitch. You don't have to be the cool version of a parent. Get an iPad as fast as you can. Get Thanks, an iPad Chris. in that, that kid's hands as fast as humanly possible. I'm into that. You're, yeah. you're gonna stop care. You're gonna stop caring what other people think real quick. The second you go out to dinner, every parent at the beginning like, I won't be the <laughs> one that gives this. them a I'm tablet. I'm better. <laughs> Give them the tablet yeah. as soon as possible. Blippy, chew on Screen that. time starts now. I just had that conversation with my husband because I, I was out at dinner with some friends and they child care fell through. You. They brought their kid. I mentioned that the kid was. I'm not blowing the kids. Out, but maybe he's a listener. Uh, he was, he's three. He was very rambunctious. And they put like a fire tablet in front of him. And it was like, honestly, like cranking him. Yes. And I mentioned that to my husband and my husband, whose spot I am blowing up was like, but we won't do that. And I'm like, yes, we will. Nick, <laughs> Nick, you're going to do that. You are 100 million percent doing that. And it's going to be your yeah, idea. Yeah. I guarantee it. Can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait. Hopefully by then there's like better iPads. Uh, I would get three TVs. Three TVs in the living room. <laughs> and that's just a marriage thing. That doesn't even account for the child, really. It'll, it'll just make everything easier. All the times that you were like, oh, I, this is an interesting point that Tony Romo made. Throw that out the window. You're never going to hear Tony Romo's voice again for another five years. You're not going to hear anybody's know. voice. It cuts sports, through. <laughs> sports exist now only I've, for you on mute. I have a, I have a take. I, I'm going to push back. I think of every sports announcer, Tony Romo is probably the one that ch young children like the best because he makes like childlike noises. Yeah. So <laughs> basic. Yeah. So basic. I don't know, Jim. Jim. I'm going to go with Bill Raftery on that one. However, you are aided by being on the West Coast. The kiss. Yes. Pacific time sports is a gift for sure. I would say take that. I would say take full advantage of your husband. Because after carrying this human being inside of you for nine months, the effort of... Put him to work, Mina. <laughs> put him to work. He's just talking about sex. No, I, man. That's you all he's talking about. Sick. All the rest not of try, you Not trying to have to another one. <laughs> Mina, I'd like to go the other way. Enjoy every single moment of this. The good times, the bad times, because before you know it, okay, you'll be uncool to them. They'll be 18. They'll be going off to college, and you'll be an embarrassment to them. And I'm telling you right now, Enjoy every, I don't care if you're changing a diaper. I don't care if you haven't slept in five days. Enjoy every moment because you know what? You'll miss it when they're gone. I also want to second that. Enjoy every moment while your au pair is handling all of that for you. <laughs> yes. You can video well, I, it. You can I pretend like the hands the, are the, yours. The generational divide really manifested itself there because y'all are in the thick of it, right? Yes. Like the ship container, you guys are you're in the mud right now. <laughs> Stu is out. Yes. So he's able to look fondly back on those days because they're so far in the rear view mirror. Mm -hmm. I have a question. If you if you guys were to power rank the parents on the show today, who would oh, emerge as number one? Oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I don't like That's this game. game. <laughs> I don't like this game because I, I don't know how Greg anyone... is just triumphantly yeah. raising both arms. I mean, I'm like the veteran. Won, Diapers like... were made of cloth. I, I, think it's, it's, so old. <laughs> I, I think it's me and Greg won too in either order, by the way, right? I, I refuse to and believe. And then we can go from yeah. there. I refuse yeah. to believe you're the best parent in this room. <laughs> I, I, won't, I won't say that. There's only one child, so maybe he, he can, of a parent in this room, so. Pivoting to the Perhaps Tennessee Titans. I hear Malik Willis is having an incredible camp. Ryan Tannehill trying to keep his job. He's got two young quarterbacks coming forward. Malik Willis didn't look like he, he'd have a career in the pros after that rookie year. Very, very difficult rookie season. Can he throw? But reports that early out of training camp are good and that he's better than Levis. What make you of the situation? I don't think it matters because the one, one takeaway from the DeAndre Hopkins signing is that the Tennessee Titans want to win now, which is always kind of a fun existential debate to have as a sports fan is if you're if you don't think your team can win the Super Bowl and I don't think there's any Titan fans sorry out there who are looking at their team as Super Bowl contenders in the AFC this year do you want them to try to win now I think is one of the central questions of sports fandom well they do they ask, answered that that's I like it when teams make personnel moves that kind of tell you how they think about themselves and in signing them 
because it, when the Titans drafted Will Levis, it was also kind of weird because it wasn't the first round. So it wasn't like, oh, we want this guy to start now. There's a lot of questions. How good do they think they are? They got a bad offensive line, but they've got a good defense, yada, yada, yada. Going out and signing DeAndre, to me, suggests that Mike Rabel, who seems allergic to the idea of tanking to begin with, views his team as competitive. And I get it. It's not a good division, even with the Jags. He is an incredibly good coach, and I think the defense is pretty underrated. You're saying the guy who offered to cut off his penis to make a Super Bowl is not in favor of taking a year off to re- to rebuild? <laughs> I uh, feel like that we don't talk about that enough. <laughs> what about the uh, like Leak Willis you. part of the, the conversation? Yeah. Because I, I, thought, playing well, I yeah. thought he looked good in Liberty. I thought he actually could throw the ball occasionally, and in the NFL he didn't look yeah. like he could do that at all. I was higher on – I mean, I, I – I, I, was disappointed by what I saw last year because I did view him as having, I thought he was very raw, but very toolsy. I also thought it was a pretty crappy situation that he was thrust into. And when I watched the offense, it didn't really look completely tailored to his skill set, frankly. Um, you know, by all accounts, uh, internally, he wasn't viewed as that dude. Well, I mean, you don't need to say by all accounts, they played Josh Dobbs with zero practice, which kind of told you everything you needed to know at the end of last season. But he was always a player who was going to take several years to marinate and become something. So um, I'm glad that, you know, there is positive buzz because it means that he's not being just cast aside after one bad season. I mean, we have 40 seconds left. What's a reasonable expectation for the New York Jets? Reasonable expectation, absolutely a wild card team. Uh, I don't have them winning the division personally, but they're a high ceiling team because of how good the defense is. The defense is freaking awesome. I'm really uh, like this beginning of the schedule is just so brutal. I don't know if you've looked at it lately, Stu. Uh, no, so, I have. Yeah. I they're one in five. Those through Cowboys. Six, yeah. yeah. And so I, I think that it's going to be a matter of whether or not the defense can kind of carry them through that. And then how long it takes for the offense to gel and also whether, you know, whoever's playing tackles survives. We're keeping Mina back for another segment because I have to tell her when poop starts smelling. Oh, boy. It doesn't smell at the beginning? No. What? Find out next. (laughs) Mina just started muttering to herself, I don't know if I should talk about this. And now, of course, we're talking about this. Yeah. I, I have, okay, so I'm pretty maybe overconfident I'm not overconfident, but I'm not the kind of person who agonizes. What if this, you know, what all the things that can go wrong with a baby. But there is one thing that really concerns me that I only found out about about, about a month ago, uh, which is that baby boys pee vertically at first. <laughs> like you could just be bent over it and it'll pee in your, he will pee in your face. I didn't it. know that. Oh God. Someone's going to clip Girls that. can do it too. My daughter's peed and poop on me when she was really young. Yeah, like, I mean, it, it sprays everywhere. I'm sorry. Physically, how is that possible? <laughs> I'm telling you, it just sprays. I'm t- I was peed on. Were you holding her upside down? Like, no. Just laying on a table. How? Nobody wants to talk about this, and I understand. Pretty why sure I Chris is plunging into parent power rankings that we're assembling. <laughs> Hi, Lucy. It's nice to meet you. Never happened to me. <laughs> I don't have a kid. I'm very overwhelmed right now. Yeah, but you, I'm sure you've never peed vertically, so I feel like you can weigh in on this topic with some. She went to Iowa. <laughs> Greg, That's did your granddaughter ever do that to you? I mean, no. He's never actually, changed the diaper. Well, I, I think I changed one diaper, and it was a, an unsuccessful proposition, and... And I didn't do it again. For you? Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, I, just, I mean, it's, it's Craig terrifying. was advocating for himself as the best parent of all time. And <laughs> well, he's never I'm, but, I'm ne- but I've never had a daughter. So, you know, my first granddaughter being uh, a granddaughter. Wait, <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. You said that you were one and done on diaper changing, literally. You were done with my after one. Yeah, not with sons. Oh, okay. Sorry. You know, back I in the day, way right. back in the day. Right. But uh, yeah, my granddaughter. You know, it's, you know, I don't know. I'd, I'd never uh, changed a diaper before. With, okay, the uh, Cody's right are not qualifying for the top five. <laughs> Pivoting quickly to the Chicago Bears. Starting to look better. <laughs> what can we expect out of DJ Moore in that yes. offense? Uh, I really like DJ Moore. I really liked that trade for that reason. I think he's probably a top 15 to 
20 receiver in the NFL. True X can win outside, big body, downfield threat, exactly what they've been missing. The question is, now that you finally given Justin Fields that, you know, group of skill players that I think is at very minimum above average, um, can he deliver him the ball in time? Can he speed up his processing a little bit? Because DJ Moore will get open and he will come down with the football. So poop starts smelling, when would you say, like months in, right? It starts off odorless. It's You have a kid and you're shocked at how not bad the smell is. It also depends if you are on if you have a formula baby. Formula babies do tend to have a smellier poop. Mm, yeah, I've tipped my hand in terms of our approach. Uh, Why doesn't it smell at the beginning? Did you? Because if I had a if, if if I had a baby whose poop didn't smell, the number one thing I'd be googling is why doesn't this smell? Because it's such mm-hmm. a because cl- it's such a clean diet. Doesn't have years of Miller Lights in the intestines and right. Chinese food so, and late night Mickey beans, D's. Chicken yeah. Parms, when, yeah. yeah, like this is a pristine. It's like that new car smell. Yeah, right. After you. So when adults eat clean, does their poop not smell? I mean it. Well, have I, they eaten clean their there, entire there are life? There's some vegans I mean... that I welcome their farts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow, those farts smell delicious. Mm-hmm. Have to. Whoa. Isolate have to. Whoa. <laughs> she she drinks way too much bone broth for that to smell good. No way. I'm just saying. A, a this baby's... is a, this is the thing on the internet that men talk about. A that, baby's intestinal you know, tract woman's... hasn't been poisoned by the fourth meal. Farts don't smell bad. I am sadly speaking from personal ex- <laughs> seeing the, the things that everything said sometimes about me. <laughs> Which honestly, as far as like horrible, creepy compliments go, I'll take. What can we expect out of the Chargers this year? Good Brand question. new offensive yes. coordinator. Uh, surprising. Yeah. Uh, the situation. Uh, it's time for them to win a few playoff games, perhaps get to a Super yeah. Bowl. They're talented yeah, enough, right? No, I, mean, I think the time has come. Uh, are we putting head coach on the hot seat? What are we doing here? He's 100% on the hot seat. A lot of people thought after last season. They, I would say if I was putting together my hot seat power rankings, he'd probably be near the top. That, um, that man genuinely cost me $80,000, and I will never forgive him. Here's the thing about the Chargers. Um Justin Herbert is like quietly the most divisive quarterback in football. Yeah, what's I the, think, so Mina, this is I have a lot of theories about this. As someone who consumes a lot of his football news through my favorite football nerds, I, I need to be caught up as to where you guys are on him now. Where are you? Uh we all really are pretty high on him. Uh but I think I think he's divisive for a few reasons. One he doesn't have a stan army behind him because he plays for the Chargers, right? So, and then the other quarterbacks that he's comp to, whether it's Tua, Joe Burrow, the, you know, the guys his age, they all have very like strong internet armies standing behind them, ready to argue mm. that a four power ranking versus a five is the greatest affront to humanity, you know? So there's that. Um, and I think, there's a there's a, he has this quality that uh, incites debate, which is a lot of evaluations of him come with what to detractors appear to be excuses, what to supporters appear to be context. So a big problem last year for the Chargers was that he didn't push the ball downfield. Honestly, this has been a thing at various points in his career. So his supporters might say, well, his offensive line was horrible. He was playing with, you know, like broken ribs and a torn labrum. And Joe Lombardi, their play caller, didn't ask him to push a ball, push the ball downfield. The detractors will say, why do you keep making excuses for this guy? Why is everybody like, you know, all these film nerds like on his size? And he maybe he's too conservative. What I like about this season is they drafted a really fast wide receiver. The offensive line should be healthy. And they got, I think, a better play caller and Kellen Moore. So, Mike, to answer your question, we'll know now. <laughs> like you're 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 changing the context. You're putting him in better circumstances, not too dissimilar from Justin Fields, who we were just talking about. So the excuses, unless all that shit goes wrong again, it is the Chargers, suddenly get taken away, and we can evaluate him more neutrally. Mina, standing on the shoulders of giants like the Jags and the Lions of last year, who's the team this year that's going to be sneaky good that everybody's going to say, "Oh, this team's not that good," and yes. you, the metrics, are going to be like, "No, this team is actually really good." I. This is probably going to age terribly. <laughs> I kind of like the Commanders. Ooh, the commies. Uh, Didn't you like them last year, though? I mean, uh, no. no, I, no. I, so the defense was really good last year, and I just did an NFC's preview pod, and 
one of my big takeaways from watching week 18 was Sam Howell looked pretty good. Uh, very small sample size. Obviously, he's a fifth round draft pick, but if he can just be average in that offense because the defense is so good, I wouldn't be surprised if they win a surprising amount of games. You buying the Lions? Yeah. I, I, you know, largely because they're in the NFC North. If they were in the AFC, I think I would probably look at them a little bit differently. But I like the stuff they did in free agency in terms of bolstering their secondary. Bringing Ben Johnson, their offensive coordinator, back was like one of the biggest coups of the entire offseason. And the thing about Jared Goff is, you know, sometimes I get, I mean, I, I'm pretty hard on him. <laughs> like, I, I think he is a quarterback to me who's really like pressure dependent, but they have one of the best offensive lines in football and they're really deep. So I don't think he's going to be in bad circumstances this year. Mina, one of your main critiques of, of, I guess, football in general is that there is no hive for Justin Herbert. And as we contemplate what Justin Herbert can do to deserve simps, I do want you to tell this studio what you think of the Miami Dolphins, whose hive is <laughs> extraordinarily toxic. <laughs> I, okay. I, there are toxic elements. There are normal and positive elements i never try to She's paint afraid. an entire fan base She's so <laughs> afraid of the dolphins fan base <laughs> really afraid of them uh but but i i want to i want to be clear what i'm about to say is not coming from a place of fear i have not let the terrorists win so to speak <laughs> not calling dolphins fans terrorists <laughs> i think this is one of the three to five best rosters in the entire nfl um, I've talked about this a lot, just top to bottom. This team is so stacked. Uh, everything they did on defense, I could talk about for hours, the personnel additions, obviously the hiring of big Fangio, it's defense that I thought was already pretty good at the end of last season, but was in a very overly aggressive scheme. That's going to change. I think they are a top five unit just based on paper, the off season, my question for the dolphins, I think is whether the offense develop, um, we're going to see this week why don't they play the Chargers, which is just the most toxic matchup possible. Perfect. Uh, what kind of changeups they come, have come up with? Because this was like an unstoppable killing machine the first half of the season. Then some you know, grit got thrown into the gears. So I'm curious to see what McDaniel has come up with this offseason. Did she just say the Dolphins are a top five unit? Chris Cody has been punching oh! the air. I, I believe it. Maybe They're so go. good. Say it again. Just say They're it so good. The roster is so and it's not just like the big names. It's guys like you can just point to they have so many good players at every position group, not just the stars, but like guys like Zach Sealer, David Long Jr., the linebacker they picked up. I mean, Javon Holland is a star, but he's not talked about like a star. I think he's going to be seen as a star after a year with Fangio. Just so many good players on yeah, this team. Very fast defense. We're chatting with Mina Kimes, host of the Mina Kimes Show, featuring <laughs> Lenny. Switching gears back to babies. Do you have a registry? Have you already uh, procured a diaper genie? You're going to need that. Oh, one. yeah. Got to get a diaper genie. I have one of those on my registry. I, I'm going to confess, I don't know what it does. Mm, can uh, TFTI, can you send me that registry link so I can feel like I'm a part of the upbringing? You can throw poop diapers in there and it keeps the smell kind yep. of trash. It's just a trash can? Yep. It's a trash can that keeps the smell in there for a day or two so you don't have to like empty mm. it, your trash every minute. But there is no smell. That's right. Good point. So. That's the genie part. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Just throw them Actually, anywhere. I don't, I don't know how yeah. to change one yet. So Should the Titans be allowed to have Euler throwbacks? It just kind of feels insulting. You know, we had this debate yesterday. I say yes. Mike says no. <laughs> they should be allowed to do that, right? You know, well, I didn't think it was insulting, but then when they signed DeAndre Hopkins and, and they showed him in the throwback, I was like, ooh, Houston. Ooh. Like, that felt like a little bit of a jab to me. But I... It's 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 funny this offseason how every throwback has been like universally loved and then the Colts came out with Indiana Knights. With Duke. <laughs> like a minute. Well, remember yeah, when they around. moved to Tennessee, they wore the Tennessee Oilers at one at what one year? One or two years? Yeah. So that answers his question. Also remember I like them. Also remember um that Gwyneth Paltrow once did a uh, wellness trend that was actually called a reverse fart. What? She I can gas. do that. Yeah, we she can do that. I can do that. Yeah. I'm like a turtle. Right I can breathe through there. Wait, 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 wait. Is it like circular breathing? Like when you play the sax, like how Kenny G never <laughs> has to stop playing the saxophone because he just sucks it in while he's blowing it out? Oh, yeah. 
Uh, congratulations. I had a cousin who could do that for like hours, and he played an instrument called that. He is a Seattle, so to give you. Like, oh wait, songs. is this? You have a lot of cousins who are just clearly like giant stoners. <laughs> Yeah, John's <laughs> what I'm saying well, is if you submerge uh, me in a pond. He's not going to beat the stoner allegations when I finish this sentence. Which and my is rear easy. is the only thing that breaches. I can live He longer. played the didgeridoo and was in a band called the Didgeridoos. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to talk about Women's World Cup. Yes. Uh, Philippines? Columbia, uh, Philippines, I would love to give you an opportunity. Actually, you should have flexed on, on Mina because I know. Korea looks, Oh, God, I forgot. Uh, South Korea looks so First bad. goal in Philippines history. First World Cup win in the history of the Philippines. I'm not trying to take the shine. Korea, big L. <laughs> I'm not trying to what? take the shine not, you're not from trying to do that? Oh. the Philippines. Okay. No, because this is how you build a program. Uh, when the United States re uh, reengaged their program, tried to get serious, hired Jurgen Klinsmann. He made a lot of overtures to Germany. And the United States is smart to reach out to anybody. If you look at the current roster, there's plenty of people that uh, don't live in the United States, don't speak with an American accent, and yet they're playing for the U.S. national team. But uh, I read an article that the the Filipinas are laden with uh, U.S. talent. Yes. No, there is a great story on Yahoo.com. What an old person. Second only to holding up a yellowed newspaper clipping is me citing a story to Yahoo.com. When did that become old? Yahoo.com. How long ago? As soon as my parents started sending me links from it all of the time. I still make a conscious effort to Lyco search once a month to see if the site still works. Just checking in on GeoCities sometimes just to make sure it's still Angel up. Fire. Oh, yeah. Alta Vista. I've asked Jeeves. And web crawler. They shut down Yahoo Answers. But one of the answers I got by going to Yahoo Sports was the question of how is this team suddenly different and good in the Philippines? And the answer goes back to the it goes back to a message board wide search, basically. Like these guys, these Filipino Americans decided to find every and this is just a classic exercise that I cannot support more, every plausible American with trace amounts of Filipino blood. And they assembled literally a roster of dozens of new faces. And there are only a small handful of, of native Filipinas on the team. But everyone else, it's from this new pool of Filipino Americans who are not good enough, certainly, to make the U.S. Women's National Team, Mike. But what they are good enough is to make goddamn history for their ancestral homeland. That is a really impressive result. New Zealand's one of the co-hosts yes. of this tournament. Uh, I know in my bracket, I have New Zealand going pretty far into the knockout round, riding on the, the winds of actually hosting this competition. So to see that result was shocking to me. And this could be a real good Cinderella story. But the whole process of like, how do we make our team better? It's what the U.S. men's national team has also done. Okay. It's, how, it's how you microwave an instant yes, competitor. Yes, yes. What, take the people that aren't good enough to play here and put them on your team? Right, because the United States, thanks to things like Title IX and all the success of, uh, of the teams that came before that uh, kicked open the door, they have this really powerful soccer program in the women's game, and not everybody is at the level to crack that national team, despite all the injuries. And so people who want the experience of playing in a World Cup, the United States men's national team has benefited from this plenty, where yes. there's been plenty of Germans not good enough to play for the German national team, so they come here so they can experience uh, – one of the most prestigious competitions there is, and to get regular playing time to also help their professional club career too, because this is all about getting better. Uh, this is a tale as old as time. As soon as FIFA opened up this portal to change your allegiance and go back further into your lineage, how was that Philippines genealogy search done? Like, what? Great was the, question, Greg. What, what and was, this is my favorite part of the story. Thank you for reminding me of it. It was literally. A couple of Filipino guys looking at rosters being like, I think that person's Filipino. Just based on the name? Yes, based on name, based on photos, based on tips they got. It's totally unscientific. Wow. Because of course, there's no database of who has trace amounts of Filipino in them. Right. But what every Filipino has, of course, is a radar that will indicate, oh, wait a minute, Dave Batista, Filipino. Wow. You oh, were the closest thing to that database, by the way. They this actually is, use the eye test. They use the gift that every Filipino has, the eye test, the radar, to say, Olivia Rodrigo, Filipino. Yeah, Eric Spolstra. Fact. Filipino. Good for you. Thank you.
Absolutely. Eric Spolstra. You look happy and healthy. Bruno Mars. <laughs> Guys, I'm, I, am, I am riding a tidal wave of people who are being racially profiled for good. <laughs> Guys, well, congratulations to you. Thank you. I'm I've got some wait. bad news. What's that? It looks like Stu Gotts got butt cracked on the quarterback three. Oh, no way. Oh, no. Yeah, oh, I just saw oh, it here. Somebody on. sent it to me. It is weird that only Stu Gotts had that report. It was, yeah. it was <laughs> a thing we should have looked twice at when Stu Gotts kept on saying he has breaking news. Amazingly, yeah. first time I've been butt cracked. Yeah, I yeah. saw it and I was like, oh, no. It's from Dimes J with two Ys. Well, that works for That's me. That's the source. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do we know he's wrong? I mean, really? Hmm. How do you no know? wonder Danny Dimes made it. It came from Dimes J. Well, thanks for bailing I, me out. I guess door <laughs> opens up for Baker Mayfield season two. Go. Let's go. And Joe Burrow. And still Josh Allen. I was not excited about Daniel Jones. I have to be honest. Well, you don't have to worry about it now. <laughs> well, that's actually a relief. I can't believe we got butt cracked. I had like we one. Didn't. I had one he job. Did. And that was to not believe a stochastic butt crack sports meme. Can this, we is, this is the dystopian future that Elon Musk has provided us. Because you can just pay for a blue check. Well, he doesn't and that's have a the blue way check. That he used, oh, wow. Yeah, the guy didn't oh, have a blue check. Oh, come on. Yeah. He had no a, blue check. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Actually, I, but no it's one just does. as well. Well, it's that's right. no it to Mike. No it's a mess. So, which leads it's us. It's a gosh darn mess. To a question I've had. I can't read your tweets, Mike. Well, this well, is I'm my question. He does the He does the dead thing, goes to threads. This is my question. How, Mike Ryan, how's 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 threads going? It's sad. Yeah, it's bad. Woo. I mean, we got off to such a hot start. Yeah, we're owning Elon. And then uh, it's just a bunch of meme accounts that I follow on IG that I don't really care what they have to say. So uh, there are things that need to be done for threads. I'm thinking Reels Pay was a way to get people into IG Reels. Let's, uh, let's have some uh, reimbursement programs here for the people that are using it. Also, just make it Twitter. Hell, not even Twitter's going to be Twitter anymore. Just own it. They have to they they filed the name X and Microsoft actually owns the trademark for X. Apparently. Here's what I'm thinking. Trade. Oh. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. Threads just his Twitter. And Elon can use X because he's been wanting to use X for a long time anyways. So give him X. Take Twitter. Make Threads Twitter. Because come on, it's basically Twitter. This, Only not as good. The sad part about threads for mike is that mike has a true poster's heart mike lives to post and he's surrounded by these people who are instagram folks i mean they're I not being an instagram person is different from being a yes. twitter person a twitter person is is a sicko if you click follow all that was the mistake clicking follow all for your like now i'm following everyone on threads all that's these on my influencers Instagram. That's what made it so exciting like oh i don't have to build up from zero here but then you realize some ig pages aren't meant for a twitter-like application but i'm trying to build a brand on threads get in on the ground you're floor, trying to teach the way that Stu gods and greg are meme accounts to you. read yep. well it's I the only it's I the only non-paywall social media that i have now because i i have stuff for free on ig but i have a subscription model over there at michael ryan ruiz and for less than a cup of coffee most people go with the 4.99 price point on Ooh. ig i'm going 2.99 slow burn www.pablo.show mm. it's free are you doing anything Jesus yep Christ. for us definitely when you'll see he's okay. on threads guys what do you i mean? have a new update for quarterback season two from a blue check mark they have approached justin fields intriguing What's i don't, tr I don't okay. trust that either i don't trust that either. I'm in, though. I'm in. Down. Down. She's i don't, one. I don't trust Ooh. this either well, I mean, it's it's a blue check mark. Can we Ooh, settle the debate the Tony and I have been having? What's more interesting for quarterbacks? Oh, season he's two? citing Dove Kleiman. Oh, what a what a ridiculous name, by the way. <laughs> I Dove? just saw Dove? it's a great Twitter follow. It's did a Lucy, must follow. But... Did you see what I saw, well, Lucy? I see that guy tweet all the time. I have no idea whether he's real or not. He's cut out a great lane for himself, but also we have just totally agreed that Dove is a normal name. Dove. It's not. There are various <laughs> headlines it's wondering nice. if Dove Kleiman is, quote, a real person. That mother is not real. <laughs> it's like when we found out Big Game Boomer was a person. Yeah. Big Game Boomer, I thought, was who that person on the airplane was referring to. And that Big Game Boomer, think 
Either a big yeah, game boomer. What, what is what is big, big game, game boomer? boomer is this, this thing is? that if you're a college football fan will piss you off because they put together all these charts that get aggregated that are rooted in zero actual data. It's just one person's opinion. And they'll but be it's like, a chart. Yeah, it's a chart. And it's like, worst tailgates in America, Miami number one. And you're like, how how did we come to this conclusion? How? It doesn't matter. It gets aggregated and shared, and it's in the mentions. What do you think about this, Mike? Well, oh, Big Game Boomer says you got a bad tailgate. Oh, oh clearly he went to all the tailgates in America, Big Game Boomer. And it's, it's very frustrating. Although I'm a fan mostly of what Big, Big Game Boomer does, it's a dangerous thing to say quickly, by the way. Mm-hmm. Big game boomer. Uh, big game goom. Are they on threads or no? Big game boomer. Big um, game booms, Mike. BGM. Yeah, yeah BGM. Booms. BGM, yeah. yes. Booms. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. although generally I'm a fan of it. I, I get really frustrated how people just take his graphs and think they're actually factual. Yeah. Uh, a graph is soaring above the bar of believability. Like, a screenshot of anything looks like it's a real thing. So if you're making a graph, yeah, your credibility is is pretty high. But his graphs will be like, here are the top 50 cheerleading squads. And it's like, how did you come up? With, where, where did you get those rankings from? What What's your criteria here? Yeah, saltiest fan bases. But did it's in pull? graph form. Yeah. What did you pull? 100 people right. surveyed? What? How did we do this? <laughs> hey, he's just laughing at us, big game boomer is. Can't believe I got butt cracked. Can you now? A journalist like you. Kind of happy about it, you know? The king of journalists. Yeah. Thank you. The voice of journalism. That's what I've become. Greg, you've been typing with two fingers the majority of the Greg, show. Greg, for most of the show. You're just pounding away over there. Have you written a column during this yeah, show? Yeah, what have you been doing Here's all what, show? Okay, I'll show you exactly what I was doing. I just typed the phrase, big game boomer. Because I wanted to know what we were talking about. Why do you type so loud and with just two fingers? Do I type loud? This is loud. Yeah. That's loud. That's Pretty also loud. not how you type. I would prefer you type that way instead of what the, the... And your posture when you type, it's just all annoying. I can type 60 words a minute with two fingers. That's not bad. Bull. You haven't done that. When's the last time you've timed yourself? Uh, I never have. And you think that's good? I'm I excited. type 125 per minute. You think a word a second is good? I'm clocking yeah, 180 don't you? easy. You don't no. think a word a second is no, good? No, no, no. The, the F and the J, it all starts there. That's why they have a little indentation on the keyboard. Yeah. And I'm somebody that doesn't type the way that they should either. But I type with two fingers. Have you? Can you find the F and the J there? Yeah, I'm looking at them right now. Can you get better at this? What, what about the F? This is a new and unimproved Dan Levatar show with the Stugats. Gamble on by DraftKings. <laughs>